Good morning to you. Welcome to Kathy Long Ministries and your bite-sized word for today is all about the battle in your mind. That's where the battle happens, is where it begins. And some people let it stay there and try and wrestle through this battle going on in your mind without realizing that we do not live according to every thought that it comes into our mind. We don't have to believe everything that we think about ourselves, about our situation. It's a thought. A lot of times in our thought life, um, the enemy plants seeds so that we think that that's something we need to believe or act on or however we feel. We let those thoughts govern our emotions. And so there's a huge battle that rages in our minds. Every single one of us, no matter how old you are, how young you are, how long you've been saved, how intellectual you are, how intelligent you are, there's a battle that rages in your mind to try and get you to think the way you are not supposed to think and to stop you thinking the way God wants you to think. So let's, I've got a few scriptures for you today. And I first want to read Psalm 23. I'm not going to read the whole Psalm, but Psalm 23 in there, there's a line that says, He anoints my head with oil. Um, in, in the days when that, the scripture was written, in the Bible days, there was a custom that when you were invited to somebody's house for dinner, the host would anoint your head with oil. And I'm not saying um, they would take a whole bottle of olive oil and dunk it on your head, because imagine if that happened today, um, you just gone and had your hair done, and then you get there and they dunk all this oil on your head, but they would anoint your head with oil, and it was symbolic of honoring you. You've been invited as a guest into this house, and you're invited to sit at the table, and the, the, what they're going to do is anoint your head with oil. Oil is symbolic of joy, and oil is also symbolic of protection. So when, when we read that scripture today, he anoints my head with oil. I know, I'll give you a, a bit of a story here. I know that God speaks to me in dreams. So in my dream life, there's a lot of communication going on in the spiritual realm that comes into my dream life, and God speaks to me that way. Um, and so when there's a lot of spiritual activity going on, I find that um, there's, there, there are often my dreams are not really good dreams and I have to, to fight that off and close doors, maybe wrong thinking or something I've been watching that's opened up something for, for, the, for the enemy to get into my dream life. And so... One of the scriptures that I, I use quite often is, you anoint my head with oil, because it's a, a, a protection. That anointing is a sign of protection. And I say, I have the mind of Christ. God is the one who speaks to me in dreams, not the enemy. And I close all the doors. And so let's have a look at these scriptures. That was just for somebody who may be struggling in their dream life. We have authority over those things. We don't have to have nightmares every night or dreams that make us fear. We have, we can guard our minds and our dream life. So Romans chapter 8 verse 6 says this. I've just got a few scriptures to help you if you're having a battle in your mind. Romans 8 verse 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Um, <clears throat> so, and then it says, yes, that's it, Romans 8 verse 6. To be carnally minded means our mind is focused on the things of the flesh, how we thought before, that, that it's how we feel, our emotions, our circumstances, um, and, and we don't allow the Spirit of God to lead us, then we are carnally minded. But to be spiritually minded, in other words, what do the scriptures say? What Bring God into the decisions, in, bring God into your thought life. Let your focus be on, on Him, and let the Spirit of God speak to you. Let the Word of God be the foundation in your thoughts. And that, it says, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Here's Colossians 3, verse 1 to 3. If then you were raised with Christ, and we have been, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Set your mind on the things above. Um, it's easy to say that when your circumstances are all great. But the, this is not a suggestion, this is an instruction, it's a command in the word. If we want to overcome the battle in our minds, set your mind on things above. Not live in denial, but choose to set your mind on things above. 
instead of focusing on what's going on around you and in, in the battle in your mind. So set your mind on things about. I found a scripture in Psalm 16 where the psalmist David says, um, I have, because I have set you always before me, something like that. I've, we go and read it, Psalm 16. It's a very short psalm. Because I have set you always before me, I will not be shaken or I will not be moved. And this is the same thing. We, if, if we are seeking those things that are above, if, we, if we've set our mind on, on what does the word of God say, who is God to me, what is the spirit of God instructing me to do, then um, we, are going, we will not be shaken or moved. Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, and it's, it's uh, to find these things in the world today is is like, like finding gems. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. These are instructions, not suggestions. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. A stronghold sets itself up in your mind when you entertain those lies too much. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Remember that. The weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, natural arguments, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Don't let the stronghold set, don't let those lies set themselves up in your thinking so they become a stronghold, like a fortress in your mind. Let the word of God um, become the, the, the fortress in your mind. What do the scriptures say? What has God promised you? What is the spirit of God revealing to you? Um, instead of the lies that the enemy is trying to set up in your mind. Romans 12 verse 2, one of my favorite ones at the moment, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. An unrenewed mind is able to, it says prove what is the good, acceptable and perfect will of God. And that means to discern, to understand, to see with the spiritual eye what is the perfect will of God. Um, so an un, a, a renewed mind refuses to be governed by circumstances. A renewed mind is able to discern the will of God and able to see this is a lie from the enemy. This is, is not from God. I do not believe that thing. It doesn't line up with the word of God. It's not what the spirit of God is saying to me. It doesn't bring peace. It doesn't bring life to me. And I will not be conformed to this world. So if you are facing a, a battle in your mind today, if, to, if today is the day you wake up and you just know all those arrows are flying all around your head and you have to take charge of your thoughts, have a look at those scriptures. Set your mind on things above. Be the overcomer today that, who, that God says you already are because the weapons of your warfare are mighty in God. So be encouraged with that today.